Hello and welcome back to Reddit Leak Season 5, Week 4. To absolutely no one's surprise, I lost last week's game against Boxer. I was, as well, the only one who didn't stay within draw range in Division 1, so that was great. Um, but, admittedly, I was kind of expecting weeks like that are going to happen first time in Division 1. Uh, world maps, especially easy world maps, just not my thing. So... Not too disappointed about that one. Sure, I could have maybe gotten the perfect score there as well if I had just, you know, known the Arizona State Highway symbol or just Tor showed me afterwards at this, like, the intersection right next to the start, basically the first intersection I went to. If you went into the intersection and then turned around, there was actually, like, a, a pickup truck that had Greer, Arizona written on it. So, mm, again, but... Who goes into an intersection and turns around to look at a car that's driving past? Maybe I should do that off more often, actually, in the US, because I've noticed like a lot of pickup trucks or trucks in general have addresses on them in the US specifically. Uh, don't really often have that in other countries, but in the US for some reason, and, and Canada, of course, um, by extension, they do have that quite often. So maybe it's something to adapt for in future weeks. But we've got it behind us now. Leaves us down in sixth place. Uh, six points, though, still decent. Uh, not too far away from the people ahead of us. And three points of a gap towards Bulgo behind us, uh, who's the like top of the relegation spots currently. So a bit of a buffer still. Uh, Ace is still looking pretty nice. That's sort of like <laughs> my, my new goal, like position-wise goal is just sort of be midfield. Like if I'm above seven, like above or equal to seven, so if I'm not in the relegation spots at the end, then I'm happy. But also like getting the third most aces would be nice. I've n <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be fighting against Boxer or Raidman in that category, but third most would be cool, especially my first season in Division 1. And so far it's looking pretty good. Um, so yeah, we'll see about that this week though, Australia, and I'm going to be playing against Verdock, so that's definitely not like a must win game, but it would really help in the fight against relegation, uh, just to be more secure in that front, if I could pick up a, a lot of points here, less so for myself, but more so to, to keep Verdock behind. And I did practice quite a bit for Australia, uh, obviously because I had to. With <laughs> I suck at as or I sucked at Australia, so um, without any practice, I could maybe barely hold my own in Division Four or Five, like not even considering Division One. So I surely played even beyond creating the seeds for the other divisions. I probably played like 10, 15 seeds um, normally, and then played like. Well, actually, it's more like 10 normally, and then I played like 10, 15, 20 even, um, just in a sort of a sped up version, where I just like maybe take a couple steps, maybe think a bit, and, and then make a guess. Not taking all three minutes, but just like quickly going in, having a look around, and then guessing, uh, just to, to get a bit better, because Australia is pretty much, rounds are, have sort of three different types, I want to call it. You've got the, the major city rounds, usually, your Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth. Um, yeah, you rarely get Canberra, but technically Canberra too. Um, round type two is you're somewhere not in those cities, but in the relative vicinity of a sign that gives you distance to some bigger cities. And round three is you're somewhere in the middle of nowhere and there's no signs. And all of those take different skills and different things you have to practice. Honestly, with the with the um, type two that I just mentioned, which is you've got distances to cities and you just got to figure out, okay, this, these cities are here, that road is there. It just takes a bit of like, you know, learning city names, uh, where they are. Just that's the most basic geogesser skills that are transferable to any other country too. Type one... The big cities was probably the one where I had the most uh, improvement necessary because, you know, cities are something that if you don't find the right city in Australia, you're fucked because the chances are your opponent will find it. And Australian cities, there's not a lot of them, but they're all so far apart. 
and like the more practice I did, the better I've gotten at sort of telling them apart. But if you give me like like if, there's some parts, for example, of of some cities that I can tell apart pretty easily, like the Sydney town center. Um, there's some specifics about Melbourne or or Adelaide that I can reasonably tell apart. Um, like Gold Coast is fairly straightforward because it's very, very like wet in the sense, like it's not wet as in the ground is wet, but there's a lot of water going around. It's sort of like an island paradise, I'm going to call it. Um, and, but if you put me in like a, a small suburb somewhere like 10 kilometers away from the city center, it's going to be a lot more difficult for me to tell which city we're at. So the most important thing I learned was electricity poles. They have become super important for me in Australia. And I've, I've talked to a couple of people about this, but I consider them like the most use, useful thing I've learned since I learned uh, Brazilian area codes. Because like purely area-wise, Australia and Brazil, I think, I don't actually know which is bigger now that I think about it. Um, but they're both very big countries. Uh, Australia's probably like slightly bigger, I think, but don't quote me on that. Both very big countries and... Um, you can be very off very quickly. And electricity poles are brilliant. They're not. Uh, okay, let me just tell you how they work. You have a lot of electricity poles in a lot of different places in Australia, obviously, because you need electricity. In most cities, you'll find them somewhere. There are some suburbs where you can go like a, a minute or so without seeing one. But in most areas, you'll find them. Even in very rural areas, you can still find electricity poles sometimes. Probably not like driving through the mountains somewhere or through the middle of nowhere, but even some rural areas have them occasionally. And essentially, the electricity pole tells you the state you're in with very, very high accuracy. There's some cases where it's probably more so down to human error of mistaking uh, something on an electricity pole for something else that happened to me a few times but in general you have uh, I think six different types that I know if there is a white stripe um, horizontal no vertically on an electricity pole potentially with a yellow stripe uh, vertically above it but not necessarily you're in western Australia if you have uh, holes in the poles kind of like in, in Romania for example you're in the Northern Territory. If you have a black plate with white numbers, or alternatively, sort of like sheet metal plate with uh, sort of indented numbers on it, you're in Queensland. If you have a yellow stripe, you're in New South Wales. That's actually one that's very easy to remember because, you know, yellow plates, yellow stripe, New South Wales, everything's yellow. Um, if you have... What's the if you have an olive wrap, um, which is basically just sort of an olive colored, um, sort of a sheet around the pole, then you're in uh, Tasmania, or I think sometimes Victoria, but Victoria is a bit shit to begin with because <laughs> uh, there is no clear like this is a Victoria electricity pole. Like Victoria is kind of the one. If everything else is gone, then that's left. And uh, if you have sort of cement in the middle of uh, sort of like two guardrails almost, then that's um, South Australia. And that's pretty much like one of the only things I've actually learned for Australia. Of course, I got more familiar with uh, landscape as well, which helps a lot um, to be able to sort of differentiate, okay, this landscape, you're probably in this region of the country. And this is not like narrowing it down super far at that point, but I had some like no moving guesses where I was on like a highway in the middle of nowhere and was like four kilometers off um, in practice. But, you know, it's it's very hit or miss. Sometimes they're, they're good guesses. Sometimes they're very easy to make as well. And sometimes if you're like out in the middle of nowhere in Victoria or uh, New South Wales, Queensland, it's, it can be very difficult to differentiate where you really are, because some of those areas do look quite similar. But overall, yeah, I'm feeling a lot more confident than I, than I felt before. And But yeah, Australia is another one of those where it's like, 
I don't know how difficult it is for other people. Like, for example, Poland, I was pretty sure, okay, that, that that's going to be not too difficult for others. Jordan as well, after practicing, I was like, yeah, it's probably fairly easy. Australia, I'm like, well, if you don't practice at all, this could be super tough. But maybe you will practice and it's not going to be that bad. And, mm. So anyway, yep, I think I've talked enough. I <laughs> uh, always like giving a little bit of uh, of a few tips at the start and, and telling you how I've practiced and stuff like that. But uh, I think we can get into the game now. Have fun. All right, a balanced Australia. Let's go. Okay, plenty of yellow license plates. New South Wales. Where in New South Wales does an airport cl Oh, well, that's helpful. Not too far away from Wagga Wagga on the A20. And Elizabeth Avenue, Sturt Highway, there's an airport somewhere. Well, we are east of Wagga Wagga, yes. How far is nine kilometers? Because I would have suspected that we should be able to easily... There is Elizabeth Avenue, yep. We are able to easily guess how far that is, and now it's about pinpointing. The problem is, I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, wait, let me see. Are the houses accurate? Probably. That might be one, then that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five, that's six, seven, that's eight, that's nine, with the red things. So we're just north of number nine. Two, three, four, uh, let's go. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Does that have something like the, a garage here? It absolutely does. I can also check, but I don't think Australian houses have their number usually displayed in a way that you can easily read it from out here. So, oh, never mind, they do. 94, yes, absolutely. All right, brilliant. We're straight north of that. Should be good. Two meters, very nice. Okay, round two. Okay. Uh, South Australia, should be Adelaide. It looks very Adelaide-like. Now the problem is, where in Adelaide are we? Uh, I'd like some bins, please. For me to tell the exact uh, city in Adelaide. A Highbury Rise could be, but I doubt it is a, a suburb. Or I don't know sometimes if it's suburbs or specific cities uh, that are like surrounding the main cities. What do we have here? Valley Road and... Ah, it's, it's, tree, it's tea tree gully, um, which is, how is that again? It's a really funny name. I've had a location there before. I just need to find it. The fact that I can't worries me that it might not be in Adelaide. should be. It absolutely should be there. The Adelaide, no, not Adelaide, the, the South Australia electricity poles. And it looks like Adelaide. Is it potentially further out? It wouldn't be anywhere all the way. It's too, way too populated for that. There it is, yeah, it's further out for sure. Right, what have we got here? Valley Road to the north. And what's in, what's the road I'm currently on? That would also be helpful. But might not be necessary. Can I find a Valley Road? That doesn't change names. A Tolly Road.
Hmm. It looks pretty big generally. Oh, there it is, Valley Road. And it stops here. So we were on Lower Northeast Road. Got 17 more seconds. And this is Bruce Crescent. Pretty sure we came from he here? Must be this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Pretty close, but I got there. I really like the name Tea Tree Gully. It took me a while to find it. I did remember, like, in my back of my mind, I was like, it's somewhere north of Adelaide. But I couldn't quite remember that I was that far out to the east, so it took me a while to find it. Right, round three. Okay, more cities. I mean, I won't complain, I guess. As long as they're not Melbourne. <laughs> in which case, I will complain. Um, okay. We have here. That's. Uh, I'll read it. All seem to not really provide much to me. It's a yellow stripe, but it's uh, horizontal, so it's not important. But that one was vertical. Blackburn South. Okay. We got here, nothing interesting, Gardner's Creek. There's a, still a yellow stripe. Could it be New South Wales? This one doesn't provide anything. 23, that's interesting. But I need to find out the city. And there's a distinct lack of yellow plates for New South Wales. Inala Village. I'm assuming it's Melbourne. Let me have one quick look. Is there a 20? There is a 23. Is there a Blackburn South? There's a Blackburn North, which makes me think there's got to be a Blackburn South. Exactly. Who? Okay. <laughs> right as I was complaining about Melbourne, we get Melbourne. Okay. Jesus. Okay. Which side street is this? Is it just not going to tell me? Lovely. Uh, is it, it's going to tell me over here, though. I can read it. Ely Road. Uh, I'm just, I've got 40 seconds on that as well. There's Ely Road, and there's Campbell Parade. Oh, PDE's Parade, apparently. Okay. Yep. All right. Perfect. This is going much better than I expected. I mean, city heavy, heavy seeds do help me now, uh, because of the electricity pole knowledge, but that I managed to figure out Melbourne, I'm very happy about. I <laughs> I hope that's all we'll see of Victoria, because that's the only state I can't identify, and I'm always relying on just the fact that I'm like, well, I've seen nothing else that suggests we're in a different state. Probably Victoria, then? Uh, all right, round four. Okay, so that's it for the states. Ah, shit, the red car. The problem is, I watched a video... Um, where Zigzag said, hey, there's this red car, it's here. And I was like, yeah, yeah, what's the chances I'll get the red car? Well, apparently not too small. Bloody hell. I don't fully remember where it was. Like, I, it's not like I just skipped forward. I watched it, but... Uh, no, I don't... Keep going this direction until fire danger period. No burning off without a written permit. Steiglitz Historic Park. Steiglitz Historic Park. Where was that? It might be super small, which is the problem. 
feel like I've seen it written before somewhere. Wait, can I find it? Okay, let me look around a bit more. What does it look like? It could be Victoria. Uh, what do we have here? Marble River. Could it be Western Australia? I think that's like the most important part that we need to determine it's not. And I, I can't determine it's not that, so let me check there. Okay, but I don't think it is, no, okay. Let me just put a marker down. Feels like Victoria, if anything. Just put me around there somewhere. Yeah, that's just a bit unfortunate, but yeah, I doubt I would have found more if I um if I continued going. So I think looking for it was the best choice. Okay. Ah, there's Staggots. Okay. But I'll take that honestly. Sixty kilometers for having essentially no idea where we are is definitely super acceptable. Yeah, there's Staglitz. I remember. Like, I did, in the back of my mind, and I say this now for the second time, in the back of my mind, I remember it being somewhere in Victoria. Like, I was by no means was I sure, hence me checking all the other states as well, but I remembered it being somewhere southeast, and it being relatively small as well, that I did remember too. Um, yep, there it is. All right, but that's fine. That's fine. If I get beaten with that score, well, we'll still have a round to go, but that's, if that's the decider, then so be it. All right. Hello, decider. Uh, Banyan tree, caravan and tourist area. Bachelor and Jerusalem to Stewart Highway. Stewart Highway. Is Stewart Highway the one up here? Yes. Um, Bachelor is here. Okay, that's brilliant. Bachelor in Jira Salas? The hell is that supposed to be? Well, the thing is, this is not Stuart Highway, is it? So, it's gonna be somewhere here. Uh, do we have a road name for this? No. But I can go on it. Which is interesting. What are you going to tell me? Reduce speed now. Well, brilliant. You're going to be more useful? No. Next service is miles away. You have a name. No, but it's an interesting combination. It wouldn't be this one, would it? So let me go a bit further north. I have my doubts about that. I feel like this is too far north already, though. It could be this one, actually. Maybe. The Litchfield Park. Actually, let me not be stupid. Litchfield. Wait, didn't I just see Litchfield? Litchfield Park. Hey, you know what? Maybe it is here. Doesn't feel like it, but if it's Litchfield Park. Hmm. Maybe we're actually relatively close to another major intersection. Litchfield National Park, turn left. I'm not super far off, I can already say that much. 
that should be fine. All right, Litchfield National Park. But it wouldn't be that, would it? Because then Bachelor is in the wrong direction. But it's not here either. I'm confused. Okay, the road is going that way, sort of. Ah, uh, maybe it's that, actually. Ugh. 30 kilometers. Here? Okay, I'm... Yeah. No way. No way I'm getting that. Okay. Maybe the sign then wasn't meant to say, hey, we're on Stuart Highway. Maybe it was meant to say, hey, you're going towards Stuart Highway if you go that direction. In which case, that would make sense, yeah. But still, okay, yeah, if you assume that, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'm definitely happy with 24.3k. Could it have been better? Maybe? If I'd remembered where Steiglitz, uh, Steiglitz was, and if I had uh, figured out round five, it could have been better. But yeah, I'm, I'm super happy. I've, I've, I've got a way better score than I could have ever imagined getting in Australia before I started practicing like a few days ago. So, yeah, not disappointed at all. If I happen to lose and not get a bonus point and end up with zero points, that's fine because I've now gone, gotten infinitely better in Australia, a country which used to be like one of my worst countries, especially if you compare it to other people. Like, on the level of like, I'm still horrifically bad in New Zealand, uh, but on that level, basically, like, I'd rather have Indonesia than Australia. That's a thing of the past now. I'd now take Australia. <laughs> Again, sometimes the diversity is pretty funny. Like there's a nice little, um, what is it called? I don't remember. Well, I, I do remember in German, but I don't remember what the, the English word for it is. I don't know if I ever learned it, to be honest. Uh, and then we've got one location out there near Darwin. But yeah, I'm pretty happy. And let's talk about the other seeds. All right, let's talk Australian seeds. And now, before we start, uh, it's important to mention that, as always, these were the first seeds I played. Well, I say as always, as always this season. These were the first seeds I played when I, when I started Australia. So pretty much almost all of the knowledge and uh, skill that you just saw in through the actual game was non-existent at this point. Um, I had no idea about electricity poles. I had no idea about phone codes, which I didn't end up using at all, but it would have been there at the back of my mind had I seen one somewhere. Uh, I had no idea about landscapes, no idea about anything Australia, really. I knew a couple of cities, and I knew somewhat a bit of the highway designations, but that's about it. And also, I should uh, think about using the right scene in OBS. That would help. All right. So, uh, Australia. Division 5. Am I starting with Division 5? What did I start with last time? I forget. I think we should start with Division 5. I think so. Either way. It started us off uh, northeast of Adelaide, near the small town of Morgan. And, again, a couple of days ago, I don't remember too much of it. I do remember I went north and went into Morgan, and you could use like this little side road going off of it to sort of get your general bearings of how far away you were, and then you could use the Lanosa Road just south of us to help you pinpoint. And 42 meters apparently in, in Australia is close enough to get a perfect score. I don't remember exactly how I found Morgan. I'm pretty sure there were distance signs to some cities here. You done the rings a bell, but I definitely had a, a sign towards Udanda in some round in GeoGuessr uh, while practicing Australia. I just don't know if it was this one. Uh, but either way, it might have also been the B81 that I found. Um, I don't quite remember, to be honest. Round two was down there in the southwest uh, near Perth. And I found, I, I don't remember if I walked north or south, but I found a sign towards Albany. 
and um, I think I found in the other direction. I don't remember quite what it was. It might have been one of those typical like highway, um, highway like markers on the side that mentioned just the first letter of the city, which was a J, which at the end turns out it was Jaramunga, but I didn't know that. I just knew it was a J, so there's a couple here. There's Jacket Up up here. Um, so I thought, well, we're on a north-south road, and uh, somewhere north of Albany, it might have even said, told me a distance. It might have been somewhere like 70, 60 kilometers to Albany. So I was like, well, <laughs> yeah, maybe this one. And I don't actually know even if that road, I think I checked afterwards. I think it does have coverage. But apparently we're just on the one highway, on the uh, South Coast Highway. Yeah, as you can see there, there's not a lot you can find along this. There's a couple of side roads. I was actually checking if I could find Bluff Creek Road somewhere. But obviously, I, like this this wasn't even in consideration for me. Because it, like I, I knew like south towards Albany. And if I know south towards Albany, this road over here is not something that comes into my mind. Of course, it makes sense. But in, just in my mind, the road was straighter north-south than it looks here. So I exclude that. Uh, when I say exclude it, I never considered it. It's not like I consciously went, could it be this? No, it can't be. I just didn't look at it. Round three then, again, a bit closer. In four minutes, ten, uh, I went north. And uh, there were signs for Tennant Creek. And I knew where Tennant... Well, I sort of knew where Tennant Creek is. I thought it was up here somewhere. And it stands out pretty quickly. Um, yeah, then it's about... <laughs> pinpointing and there are a couple of streets uh, well one street to the north um, and I'm pretty sure I used that and then just made an educated guess a bit too far south and lost one point but that's not too bad I feel like I remember this having something stupid um, on the signs that you'd uh, I think this was the one like it, it's too far to the signs here but I think this was the one where all of the signs like the first four or five signs towards uh, the city on the way there were all like Welcome to the city and all of the advertisements like this, this and this is in the city. And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> Can you not tell me the name of the city, please? Uh, I think it was that round. Pretty funny. Um, then round four was in the outskirts of Melbourne uh, in Kilsif, actually. And I was sort of in the right area. I think I must have, considering I put it here, I must have seen... Uh, Probably on bins, maybe somewhere else. I must have seen mentions of Croydon. And then I just couldn't find the right roads in Croydon. Because we weren't in Croydon. We were in uh, Kilsif. Yeah. That's just how it is sometimes with Australian cities. But you do at least usually get close if you are putting your marker down in the uh, city slash suburb. I never know. Um, that corresponds to what you saw. Then that's also why I've learned, as you saw in the seat that, well, in my seat, the round in Melbourne, I think it was, where um, you, if you know you're on a big road, you know the name of a big road, kind of not ignore, like still be in the right area for uh, the city. I think it was Tea Tree Gully, uh, which isn't in Melbourne. Wait, it is in Melbourne. No. Tea Tree... Tea Tree Gully, in, that was in, in Adelaide. Um, so I remembered, yeah, this was Valley Road. It's been about 20 minutes. Can't be expected to remember stuff. Now, I, I found mentions of Tea Tree Gully, and then I knew this Valley Road is pretty big. I am going to find it without too many problems. But it's not. it doesn't necessarily have to be in Tea Tree Gully over here. So I checked south of here, and I knew, okay, it's a big enough road, I could find it pretty easily. And you can see it's pretty far away, but you're still somewhat in the right region there. It could also just be that uh, some of these are suburbs and some of these are cities, and it just, do you guess it doesn't differentiate? So it could be like, if you zoom out here, it could be that these are the cities, and like Hope Valley, for example, is just like a suburb in Tea Tree Gully. Could be, I don't know. Uh, feel free to correct me if you know more about that. And then round five brought us right back up here again. So actually, that's an interesting thing. Let me look at this. Okay, keep that in mind. Now let's look at this. Does it look very similar? <laughs> I 
barely could tell that we've opened a different image. So that's also a nice little uh, fun um, uh, check for the uh, Division 5 players just to see, like, are they paying attention to what they're doing? Um, it's a round that looks the exact same. It's just a few kilometers. Okay, that's maybe more than a few even. That's like 20 kilometers south, but still, looks the exact same. Um, are they paying attention? Do they remember where their round three was? It's not, so it's not like they're back-to-back -back rounds. There's one round in between them. And you do have, again, some pretty nice pinpointing there, although the fact that I managed to get within 14 meters is a bit insane. I might have used this here, which I'm not always sure what it means. But there is this road here, which isn't on the map. Uh, let me close it again. It's not on the map, you can see there. But I think these might have something to do with potentially like agricultural borders, where it, it could be like, hey, the, this farmer owns this piece of land and this one owns that piece of land. And I just thought, usually, it, it would make sense to make a road at the border of your farmland. So I thought, maybe that's, maybe that's what it is. And I was, I was, I was spot on, essentially. I still don't know if I was right with my assumptions. I could have been completely wrong about that, but I chose the right spot. <laughs> All right, so that's, that's a fun little end there. I'm interested as well how many people managed to pinpoint that one. So in the end, I was only away, uh, well, off uh, 33 kilometers on round two. I think overall, it's a fairly easy seed especially if you uh, go the right way in round three and find Tenant Creek. If you manage to pinpoint sort of round three, then you heavily benefit from that. Because the thing is, if you don't manage to find round three at all, you won't, you'll, you'll have a much more difficult time remembering where it was in round five. So that's almost like a double whammy. Like if you mess up round three, there's a good chance you'll mess up round five as well. Um, the other rounds weren't too difficult. Like Morgan is actually interesting as well. I don't think it was that easy either. So that could be fun to see how people do in that. And then, yeah, that's just outskirts of Melbourne. We'll see. And then that's also interesting. But yeah, pretty interesting seed, but not too difficult. The Division 4 seed, uh, I think, falls into a similar category. We have a very nice distribution here. And it also has something very interesting in it. But we'll get to it. We'll start off in round one. Uh, which was in Tamworth, and Tamworth is like one of the one of the rare like smaller cities in Australia that I do know roughly where they are. So I found that fairly quickly uh, because there were mentions of Tamworth somewhere here. I mean, I don't remember where exactly. And then we started down here in Aberdeen Street. Round two, I was four point six kilometers away in Perth in the northeast. Yeah, that was a bit annoying because. Uh, I knew we were in Swan Valley, uh, which isn't necessarily mentioned here, but there is West Swan, there's Middle Swan, and there's Upper Swan. So I knew, like, I knew we were somewhere in this area, but I just couldn't for the life of me figure out where exactly we were. Uh, I couldn't find any of the road names. Uh, I didn't know the actual road we were on. I just knew like some of the side roads. Uh, I think Edward Street was one of them. George Street was another. I just couldn't find them. Um, I must have not even properly checked this road at all. Uh, I don't know what I did. Like the, the Ugly Duckling Wines, which is a fun name, uh, was also a business that I actually saw while traveling, but I just, I don't know, I didn't, didn't remember it or I, I, it just never entered my vision, my field of vision. Uh, either way, 4.6 kilometers away. It's not the end of the world, but this is a seat that you could potentially 25k. It's not easy by, by no means, um, but it's possible. Round three then brings us over here. And here you got a little side road, which helps. Uh, still, I was way too far south. Uh, is the side road actually on there? Uh, it's this one. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, kind of. I feel like maybe there was another, I don't know. I don't remember. Um, but I found Binu. I think I, yeah, I definitely went south and made my way towards Binu. And what I then found to determine that we're in like Western Australia, I don't remember actually. 
But I, I remember it not being too difficult. And yeah, then pinpointing her somewhere on this curve. I think I wasn't even properly paying attention to that road anymore. Or I just couldn't find it, I guess. Because otherwise, I probably wouldn't have put myself that far south. Although, as always, you know me. It's, it's very difficult for me to tell how far away from something we are. Anyway, then comes the interesting round. That's probably one of my favorite rounds um, in the other seas, which is right down here in Tasmania. Well, let me show you a bit of that. Because there are good clues here. The problem with this round is, and problem in quotation marks, problem for the players is that well, it's been recorded in March 2010, and a lot of what you get around here is Gen 1 coverage. But you do have more than enough information within this Gen 2 coverage to be able to pinpoint yourself. And that's why it's a valid round in my book. And yeah, you can you can absolutely pinpoint myself. I You saw there, I was about four kilometers away and I overlooked, I went back to check later on, I overlooked a piece of information that would have made it a lot easier. And it's difficult to spot, so I'll show you that in a second. But yeah, the first information here is a bit misleading um, because... Norik Bay is nothing that shows up anywhere. But you do have a map down here that shows you which bay you are located at. You do have sort of a little bit of islands around here, and that can give you a good clue. You can probably tell that you're in Tasmania from how it looks. And you've also got the electricity poles, of course, there with the olive wrap. Um, and then I went, just let me go. I think towards the south, you get to Gen 1 coverage relatively quickly. But here, and it's very inconspicuous, you turn around, here's the town name, Tarana. If you just go past it, you could very easily overlook that. Because, but let me actually check, what is that? Apps by the Bay, okay, yeah, I looked at that too. I just thought, I check again if it's something important. Um, because that seems like a rarity relatively in, in Australia. I've not seen that anywhere else. So yeah, as I said, it could be easy to overlook if you just go past or I overlooked it the first time around. But there is more. So even for the players like who have not looked at electricity poles and who do not know the landscape of Australia, I would have said for them it might be a bit unfair to only give them like maybe a kilometer or two, maybe three to move around uh, with just that. So there is one more piece of information for the players, which is over here, which does tell them, hey, the Tasman safest speeds. So, okay, you know you're in Tasmania. So at least that's something. And with Tasmania, with that knowledge, and with the picture of the bay, you can definitely find it. Because that's essentially the only knowledge I had. And I figured out, okay, it's got to be somewhere around this big area. Essentially around this, wait, around this is what the image showed. And if I paid more attention and was more sure about it, I could have also spotted that island that you can see from the start. Um, and here's Tarana. So there's plenty of information to pinpoint it, even if like around here, I think starts Gen 1 and around here starts Gen 1. Um, then we have round five, which was super easy for me uh, because it was just like in the north of Darwin on the coast in Nightcliff, And you've got road names here you've got nightcliff nightcliff road and casuarina drive and yeah it's just a very easy round you see the ocean no problem shouldn't shouldn't be problems for anyone the division three seed then has the first round where i was just way off and it was immediately round one uh because it was north of canberra and quite frankly there isn't a lot around here uh the thing is just that that's not my problem. Now, on a, a, a serious note, like you can travel far enough in Gen 2 coverage um, so that you're not like immediately constricted by Gen, Gen 1 coverage. You get the surrounding areas. You get a little bit of a landscape. Are you getting any signs? Probably not, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I didn't see any. But purely based on landscape, you can sort of get in the right area and well with sort of the right area i mean like somewhere in the east coast of australia and if you can make your way to something um sure but i 
not sure if it's possible. However, that is also something that's quite nice. Just to just to check if anyone's cheating. Is anyone getting that spot on? I'm not saying that you have to be cheating to get that spot on. It's possible. You can probably guess around the area. I'm not sure I might have seen something towards Gundaru. Or if you like, go all the way south here. Although I think there's Gen 1 coverage somewhere here as well. You might see something. Um, but it's definitely something where you can be like, okay, you got that. How did you get that? So it's it's nice to have these rounds in there, here and there. And it's a valid round, as I said. It's got Gen 2 coverage far stretched enough that you can travel for five minutes and not every round needs signs. Round two was then over in Perth, uh, right to the north here in Marangaroo. Uh, I found that uh, suburb and then, yeah, three minutes, 17. I don't think I had too many problems with that. I don't remember exactly what else I found. Round three, again, not too difficult in uh, Wodonga. Took me a minute 58. Again, I'm not quite sure what I found. I'm pretty sure I found this town name. Um, well, obviously I did. But it might have actually been like some street names here. I'm pretty sure. I don't remember which street names. Might have been the C315, might have been the M31. Probably was the M31, actually. And round four. Again, pretty easy, just in Sunshine Coast in a suburb of Nambur. That's still a suburb, it's pretty far out there, but yes. Um, and we started right next to St. Joseph's Primary School. I don't think I went much further than to this corner right here. Maybe up and uh, down a bit, but yeah, minute 13 was pretty easy to find. And then round five was at the border between uh, Victoria and South Australia here. And yeah, I don't actually fully remember what I found here either. I kind of traveled to the border. That's way too far. Um, well, it's it's reachable in four minutes for sure if you just leg it and go as fast as you can. But I definitely didn't. I don't remember what I found. Probably the road name. Probably likely actually some distances. Uh, I think I found the distance to Uyen actually now that I think about it. How did I then find Uyen? I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure I found the distance towards it. Might have found the distance to something on the west as well, but I don't remember that. Nothing, none of these cities uh, stand out in my mind. The Division 2 seed, the second to last seed we're going to be looking at, that's, that's going to be fun. Um, we've got three fairly straightforward, easy rounds down there in the south, and then we've got this two, these two. Um, but again, I have to mention, as well, again, like this was done without practice. I don't know if I had practiced beforehand, if I played this seed right as it is again, if I would have figured these out. Probably would have figured out one of them at least, but we'll see. Um, well, we won't see, but I can make an estimated, uh, make an estimation, make an educated guess. Round one was near uh, Medora Bay or in Medora Bay, north of Medora, uh, south of Perth. Um, and... Again, I think I didn't travel too far. There was a lot of information at the start about Medora Bay and Mandura. It just took me a while to figure out where they are. And eventually I found that we're somewhere south of Perth. Or I just started looking there. That's also possible. Because like Ocean to the left, it's not a lot of places it could be. And in the end, I found it uh, three and a half minutes. So it wasn't exactly like with a lot of time remaining, but I did find it. Let's actually do this a bit one different. Uh, this one a bit differently because those two rounds are so similar. I talk about them last. I can barely speak. Uh, round three was another interesting round. Actually, I did find this one, but that's another one that could be super difficult for people to find. So I'm generally I'm looking forward to how people do on a lot of these seeds to to see how they handle it. And um, yeah, round three is here. I thankfully went south and hit the Sturt Highway. From there, I'm pretty sure I found a sign towards Blanchetown. I don't know if I found something in the other direction. I must have. Maybe I found something north towards Morgan as well. And that was enough for me to find it. Either way, it's a pretty recognizable... Um, well, it's pretty recognizable for a pinpoint because you, you've got the river there to your west. So you can use that a bit. Um, 
that's a pretty interesting like uh, road arrangement here as well because you've uh, you've essentially got two roads following the river like the full length. Um, you must have got barely any bridges here as well. <laughs> So little that, in fact, this bridge was so significant enough that you had to name the city after it. Um, but yeah, it's another fun little round. If you go north, you might be in for a rough time. But if you manage to go far enough, I don't know if that's possible. But you could get to Morgan and you could potentially go like, oh, hey, I recognize that from the Division 5, 4 seed. I don't remember. I think 5. So yeah, that's interesting, but I did find it. And then round five is uh, south of Canberra in Royala. And I went south and eventually crossed the state border uh, from New South Wales into the Australian Capital Territory. And then there was a road name here as well. Uh, so it wasn't too difficult to pinpoint in the end. Now we started up here um, sort of between these two roads, equidistant. Uh, so fairly straightforward. And there was also on this, this had a gate. Uh, to enter it, which mentioned Durandurri. So even with that, you could uh, get closer there. Um, but yeah, if you again, if you go north, you might be you might be going a long time until you find something. It's interesting. It's <laughs> just this this little green strip following this road. That's funny. Um, all right, and now let's talk about the elephant in the bush. These two rounds, round one up here near Woluga. Um, I can give you a look of it. We can compare them afterwards. Well, well it looks quite nice. Uh, that's probably going to say reduce speed, isn't it? No, road subject to flooding. Okay. Um, but I just did not find much at all. I don't remember which direction I went. I might have gone north. Uh, if you go south far enough, you'll make it to the 49. If you find something there, I can't tell you. I didn't check, but actually you might. Be, maybe I did go south. Maybe you'll find a sign towards Kilkavan because I do remember that standing out in my mind somehow. Yeah, maybe even to, maybe I did go south. Maybe there's a sign towards Kilkavan and Gimpy and I just didn't remember. Like I remembered Gimpy, but I just didn't remember where it was. I think that's how it went. So if, if you do remember where Gimpy is, which you should because... Again, it stands out pretty quickly. Um, you might have a good chance of finding this. And then round four is just a bit further south in Patrick Estate. And it actually looks pretty different, even though it's not that much further south. It's very flat compared to the pretty hilly round we just had. And it's also, it looks a bit drier. It's always difficult to tell with, uh, with Australian coverage because there's a lot of it that's been shot at different times of the year and just in different years. And a lot of it just looks different, even if it might be like very close to each other, just because of the different camera quality, making it look, look a bit odd. And you can tell, I think this is Gen 3 coverage and the one, the other round, round two, I think is Gen 4. Uh, but let me quickly double check that. Yeah, that's Gen 4 coverage. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure. It might be Gen 3 coverage as well. No, it's covered April 2021. It's definitely Gen 4 coverage. Um, so that makes it look a bit different as well. And you can walk around here. I found a couple of mentions of those cities. I found Kuminia. I found Patrick Estate. Uh, when I say I found, I found the mention of it. I didn't find the city. Of course not. Um, I had a few rounds later on while practicing that were in this sort of general area. I had a couple down here near Jacob's Well. I think I had one more near Patrick Estate. Um, so maybe if you practiced a bit, you would recognize those names. I didn't. And yeah, I had no idea where we were. And apparently both <laughs> back without practice, I was like, I don't know where it is. It's gotta be Victoria. Um, <laughs> hasn't changed much that fault, but yeah, I don't know how or where I would have gone right now. Maybe I probably would have found some electricity poles, uh, in this one for sure. And I probably would have recognized where Gimpy is in this one. So maybe, maybe doable now. But back when I first started, this was a very, very tough seed. And then we've got the next seed, which didn't go much better now, did it? Oof, another fun seed for Red League next. Round one started us off uh, right down there in Lake's entrance. I'm pretty sure I found mentions of that city name. 
Um, but I just had no idea where we were. And in the end, I went in Adelaide. Because it looked, it's oftentimes very difficult to tell apart like a, um, a smaller city somewhere in the, somewhere like that's not a major city. As like, tell that apart from a suburb that's like far out there in one of the bigger cities. Like, telling apart, for example, I don't know, Smithfield from Lake's entrance. Of course, they look very different, I'm assuming. Uh, but like, just purely based on like population size and architecture and stuff like that, it's difficult. Um, I must have gone, I don't know which way I went because I, <laughs> I must have not seen much in the way of water. That's for sure. Uh, round two was apparently the easiest one of that seat. And even that wasn't too easy. Like, you've got the train tracks there. I must have found distances to some towns. I don't remember. Maybe Warrnambool, uh, maybe Geelong, uh, probably Lismore. But I can't actually tell you how I found it anymore. Maybe the road number, actually. I feel like B140 stands out in my mind somehow. So maybe that. Um, round three was then up in Darwin again, or near Darwin. Um, yeah, Channel Island. That's always a bit odd because let me look at it. Yeah, now that I've practiced a bit more, I'm like, okay, this could definitely be very close to Darwin. Uh, well, it says Darwin LNG right there. Um, but the thing is, I don't know how far away from Darwin it is. And I have no idea what LNG means. I still don't. Um, so I thought maybe we're somewhere down here. We're somewhere in the north-south road. Uh, <laughs> somewhat. It was more west-east. I think that's actually not too bad of, a, of an estimation of road direction there, just from the starting point. And I was looking for this Ichtis, whatever it may be, and never found it. Apparently, Ichtis project admin is right here. Yeah, no idea. Uh, be fun to see if anyone finds this. Uh, from some of the more experienced players, for sure, someone will find this. But from the next players, it will be interesting. What to me suggests that good practicing or good finding skills of Channel Island, perhaps. Uh, then we have round four uh, and five, which are right next to each other. Um, round four near Rockhampton, which... I must have gone like north or something. Maybe I even went here and then north. Definitely didn't go into Rockhampton, typically. And yeah, I found nothing, I think. Um, at least none of this rings a bell. Obviously, I know Rockhampton, but didn't find it in that uh, round. So I just was way off uh, all the way down in New South Wales somewhere. And then round five, it was a bit closer. Um, what did I find here? Honestly, it's another round where it's like, you're in the middle of nowhere. Good luck. Uh, for some reason, the Leichhardt Highway rings a bell, so I must have found a sign for that, but obviously I wouldn't know where that is. Probably didn't find a sign for banana. <laughs> At least I would have remembered it. Um, yeah, I don't think I found much in that round, actually. Which surprises me then that I was sort of close. I think that was a pure landscape guess. But yeah, another pretty difficult seed for Red League Next, but yeah. It doesn't matter too much for, for Red League Next how difficult the seed is because, it, as I've mentioned before, I think, although I don't know if I've mentioned it on my channel or on the eSports channel, but for Red League Next, it's much less relevant if you have to just make a guess based on landscape. And it's like, it doesn't matter too much if you get 100 or 500 points. Whereas in, in the, you know, the main five divisions, it matters a whole lot. So you want to avoid pure guesses a bit like I'm not going to say you want to avoid them entirely sometimes that's just all you have and I think yeah as one round was I think in, in the other seeds I don't remember which one it was uh, I think it was the division three seed yeah sometimes you just you know if you get closer based on landscape then you win and there's still four other rounds so if you know your opponent messes up one of those let me actually check how difficult those were. I don't think they were too difficult, actually. Um, so, yeah. Well, if he messes up one of those, then you're going to get your win anyway. And if he doesn't, then, well, he was just better on the landscape, guess. But, yeah. That will be 
Reddit leak for this week. I think I, I waffled on for a very long time on on these this sea talk, but it was pretty interesting. Australia is is very interesting to talk about the seas, much more interesting than Volvo dealerships was or Jordan. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see each other next week in Idaho. I I also just want to mention I found a quick uh, pretty interesting that we had nothing in Christmas Islands or the Cocos Islands. I had no no locations there in practice either. I think I had a couple in on Kangaroo Island in practice, but uh, a lot of it was Gen One as well, so not really suitable. But yeah, hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks for doing so, and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.